I keep trying to make this video and not getting very far with it. Maybe that's a sign that this is a tricky video to make and I keep getting these interruptions. I hope that's a good sign. So let's make this video and I'm going to begin doing something I wouldn't normally do, which is I, I'm going to say a prayer or, or at least I'm going to ask that what I speak be words of wisdom that will uplift, that will bring light, direction and will apply the teachings of Jesus to our lives today because I'm going to be using words of Jesus from the scripture from the Sermon of the Mount and I want to just lean in and listen listen to what's coming through so it's not notes it's not ego it's not anything that's my own agenda but that it's something real and true and inspired and I'm going to ask for protection for this time this next 15, 20 minutes maybe, so that there won't be any interruptions. And I'm going to invite you to join me on this journey. Let's see what comes up. So the verse that I'm going to read is in Matthew and it's about two masters. It's about duality. No one can serve two masters for a slave will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So it's using a metaphor of, of the slave and the master and you can't serve two masters. Who are these two masters? It, it's this dualistic drive, the tension between good and evil or between heaven and hell that we experience on this earth as incarnated beings. You cannot serve God and wealth. Well, the word wealth that is, is translated as wealth is the word mammon in Aramaic. And the word Mammon has more to it than just simply being about money, okay? It's to do with property, to do with power, to do with profit, to do with real estate. So it's about control, domination. We hear a lot, don't we, about how much of the world's wealth is owned by maybe 1% of, of the population. You know, it's to do with how, who is controlling the real estate. And so this is really about who is controlling the real estate of your life. Are you truly a sovereign being? And it's where you put your thought is where that where you give the power to. So thought is the real estate. Okay, so I'm being reminded of what we know now. All the mystics have known this before, that what shows up as reality is really starts as within, so without, as above, so below, and 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 so on. But that now we know with um, from Einstein and uh, you know the collapsing of the wave where we put our attention to it. That's when matter takes form because really matter is just energy slowed down light frozen light so it, it turns up as solid and not just matter as in what we experience as objects but also happenings and events reality in other words so reality really is shaped by thought You can be persuaded to think that you are powerless because you are one individual among seven billion souls. Therefore, you can make very little difference. That's what the narcissists want you to believe. The narcissists who, con who want control, they control everybody. They try and boast, we are in control. 
The narcissists aren't people, by the way, they're spirits. The people who play out that role, that story, are pawns in the game. This truly is spiritual battle. It's a battle for the mind. A battle for the soul. The soul of the individuals, yes, but also the soul for the community, for the collective, for the planet, for humanity. Who is going to win the battle? The one who is given power through consent. Consent must be given. This is what free will means. To be a sovereign being, you must consent with awareness, with full awareness of what is happening. If you are walking down the street, heaven and hell are competing for your attention. They're trying to get a word in edgeways. Your reaction to everything that happens is through latching on to a thought. Is it a thought that is suggested by heaven or, or by hell? It only becomes real estate, concretized, if you like, material, if you give it traction. So you are not your thoughts. You are not your thoughts, but you are what you give thought to you are you are what you allow your thoughts to make you in other words you are, you you need to be a critical thinker aware of thought itself it's it's awareness aware of itself okay so you're able to discern between good and bad between heaven and hell through uh where the person's treasure is where the, where that 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 person's treasure is and what I'm being reminded of is that uh, the that religion Christianity in particular is the battlefield is the battlefield because the soul is the goal yeah and so the angel the devil will come hell will come disguised as an angel of light but by their fruits are they known. Okay, there's something called the New Apostolic Revival within Christianity right now. And its signature is uh, narcissism, greed, control. So these are the big mega churches that control how people live their lives and behave through pastoring the sheep, but really it's a kind of almost cultish, almost cultish. They'll want to tell you who to date. They'll want to tell you what you should do with your money and perhaps what job they want you to do. This very subtle coercion and control. And yeah, that's real estate because that's actually uh, feeding the narcissism of hell. Hell is a narcissist. Also, yeah, money, people that, that want to make a lot of money out of that. So churches that become very wealthy, individuals that become very wealthy, televangelists and all, all such like. And because they're motivated by hell rather than heaven, because they're, they're, it's greed, it's power, they will align with the state. So beware of faith and state coming together this never worked in the past it never work in uh, in the future it doesn't work now it never will because this is trying to serve two masters you're doing a deal with the devil the church at uh, the state is about power 
about control over over population over people and so those who get in bed with the state bring a, a, a form of religion that is I'm not saying that word that is um oh what, what word can I use I don't know I can't use that word, it's a swear word. It just means uh, corrupted, it means that it's not pure, it's been contaminated, okay? Heaven never seeks to coerce and control, heaven seeks to empower. Heaven always feels free and loving and joyful by their fruits they are known. So what are the fruits of the Spirit? Joy, love, peace, forbearance, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, truth. So it's the caliber and the quality of the presentation. Not through using a label Christian. Christian and nationalism don't belong in the same sentence. They are two masters. You can't serve two masters. You will hate the one or love the other. You can't serve nationalism and Christianity because they don't coexist. Christianity doesn't see bound boundaries, doesn't see us and them. In Christ, all the duality, there's no longer male nor female, Jew nor Greek, Rome nor free, it all collapses, all is one in Christ. Christ is another name for everything. This is what's just come to my mind. Richard Raw has a podcast called Another Name for Everything. And what the other name is for everything is Christ. In other words, Christ is, was in the world redeeming the world to himself. Redeeming everything back to goodness in the material, the whole of the material creation. This is the imminence of Christ. The imminence of God. Yeah, okay. The imminence of God, because the God that is not imminent, that is transcendent, we might call Father, if we're using that as a metaphor, and it is just a metaphor. We're not literally meaning God is a man. Uh, you know, we've got to be careful of that. Somebody was trying to say that in my comments section, and, you know, the, that, that's form, isn't it? Because Father God, the source, is formless, all right? So we have to let go of even metaphor. But... The immanence is uh, is the um, is the incarnated divine, and so that's yes, Jesus the man, but it's also the creation because that's what logos is. Logos is the created, the programming that that gave birth to the universe as we know it, and the world as we know it, the earth as we know it, planet Earth, and all the creatures within it, including you and me. All right, so. The, the signature of Christ is oneness, unity and love. Anything that is divisive, anything that speaks of the other as separate, anything that speaks of the enemy, anything that speaks of um, protecting oneself from the other, is a deception to keep you in chains but also in the blindness of duality look at the the quality or the signature of the words that are used and the way in which people speak that's by their fruits they are known Choose gentleness, choose love, choose non-resistance. What you resist persists. 
So by resisting, by fighting something, you're giving attention to it and you're making it stronger. What you don't give attention to will fade. Okay, so two ways forward, two ways to bring heaven to earth, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, two ways to give heaven to earth by giving time and thought to those things that are good. Think on things that are pure and lovely and, and truthful. Spend time in prayer, meditating on the word of life and light aligning with the angels and with Christ, with Christ Jesus, if you choose Jesus as your master, as I do. Choose who you serve. So you're making the I single. You're, you're, you're serving only the highest. And in doing so, you anchor the light into the material. You will feel different. You'll feel different in your energy, in your energetic body, your vibrational reality. You'll feel more joyful and peaceful and loving. And that's not simply just then that you'll influence the people around you that you meet, but you will you will be uploading and changing and tweaking the algorithm of the collective consciousness. So through focused attention on what is good and through denial of attention to what isn't good, resisting engaging, resisting engagement, because what? The enemy, the adversary, Satan, remember, just means the adversary, the enemy, wants to do what hell wants to do is to press your buttons so that you will get angry. Because when you get angry, you're expending energy and you're giving energy over to the darkness. So consciously step back and disengage from that. See it happening before, before you let it play your, pull your strings. And just observe that happening. Observe it when you turn on your TV. Observe it when you, when you pick up your phone. And through detachment doesn't mean you're sticking your head in the sand. It means you are being truly sovereign because you are aware of where you're giving your power. You could despair because you see how many are engaged in giving away power to the darkness. But don't be despair, because even if your faith is just the size of a mustard seed, it can grow into a huge tree where birds find shelter. Oh, how can I say that? Try to grasp an understanding of the, the power of light. Okay, a candle, even in the darkness, will light up that whole room, even though it's a single tiny flame. Okay, this is the meaning of don't hide your light under a bushel, but let it shine for all to see. A bushel is a, a capacity, has a limit on its capacity. Hold it up high for all to see. What does it mean, hold it up high? Take it to the place of higher vibration. Take me to the rock that is higher than I. What is that, Psalm 61, is it? Take me to the rock that is higher than I. I, the I am. The I am awareness. My viewpoint on the world and my life. Take me to the rock that is higher than that, than I. So that my viewpoint, my I is single. My viewpoint is higher. Non-dual. Single. cannot serve two masters, God and mammon. Your true power is in your thought and how you are using your thought and your consciousness because thought creates the reality for you and for everyone else. So don't be deceived by mammon. But anchor the kingdom on earth. Seek 
first the kingdom and all these things, all will be given unto you. Understand the power you have to create. Hold on to your sovereign power and use it wisely. Choose love. Choose light. Choose Christ. Thanks for watching.